Hello everyone and welcome to this eCognition Deconstructed video. Today we're going to talk about the Principal Component Analysis Algorithm. The acronym for this is PCA and I'm going to use it throughout this video just to save some time. What is a PCA? It's a dimensionality reduction method. So what you do is if you have for example a 10 band imagery you can reduce it to one or two bands if you like. So reducing a large data set to a small one. And the advantage of a PCA is that it still contains most of the information, the reduced principal components that are the result of principal component analysis. However, it comes at the expense of accuracy. You're gonna lose some information because you're reducing the feature space. The overall idea of a PCA is to trade a little accuracy for simplicity. I'm gonna show you examples. I have downloaded data sets that have more than 200 bands and I'm gonna reduce it to three. And that just makes it easier to explore your data sets. It becomes smaller. It's easier to visualize it in a three band combination. For example, if you reduce it to three bands, it also makes analyzing your data set easier and faster because you just have three bands, for example, instead of 200. And I will show you that in some projects. Overall, the idea is to reduce the number of variables of a data set while preserving as much information as possible. So you're kicking out the noise and the layers with no additional variance and in information. Important is to understand that the principal components have nothing to do with the original features. It's totally different feature space, it's dimensionless and it has nothing to do with the original values. Let's run through an example. Let's assume we have an input layer with 200 bands and we are creating 200 principal components based on our input. The beauty of the PCA is that these newly formed principal components will have the maximum variance explained in the first principal component and the second principal component has the second highest variance and so on. You could for example have the first principal component could explain 74% of the total variance in your data second principal component explains 16% of the total variance and let's assume the third one explains 9% of the variance. So overall you would have 99% of the variance explained by just three principal components which on the other hand means that the, the other 197 features or principal components in total only explain 1% of total variance additionally. And then you would need to think about if it makes sense to also include 197 more dimensions to your project to add 1% of variance. Using just the top three principal components, you have 99% of the variance of the information and you have reduced the dimensionality from 200 to three. And then this makes it easier to explore your data set. It's smaller, you can easily visualize it and it also improves the performance of algorithms that are using these data sets as input. All right, enough talking. Let's have a look at some data sets and let's see how to implement this algorithm. I've downloaded some hyperspectral data sets that are available for free. And what I've downloaded is Hyperion data sets, which is an instrument that sits on board of the Earth Observation 1 spacecraft was launched in 2000 and this one collects more than 200 spectral bands with a spatial resolution of 30 meters. These are the files so I try to get data from across the world because that makes it more interesting, right? And I'm simply going to use the predefined import to create a project for each file. So if you open eCognition and you are in the default workspace, you simply can right click here choose predefined import, then choose import template generic raster one file per scene. And then the root folder is the folder where you have the data set. So I'm simply going to navigate to my data folder and then it automatically going to create for each file. It finds a project. Hit OK. And here we go. So we have five files, five projects. Let's open the first one. And you see, we do have quite a lot of layers. It looks like we can display here just 
oh, it's a mess because <laughs> we have so many layers. But you can change the band combinations and try to come up with a combination that uh, helps you identify the features. The second one looks different. Right, so it looks like a bit of agricultural area. I'm simply gonna go wild with band combination. So it's difficult to get a good band combination because you don't know which band holds valuable information, right? Third one, agriculture. I see a city on top. And also quite a bit of noise in the data set. So I think you get the idea that I've downloaded different data sets from different regions in the world, all acquired with the same sensor though, right? This hyperspectral uh, sensor that I've talked about. And let's have a look how the PCA handles these data sets. Let's open the first one and implement the PCA. So simply in the process tree, right click at new process, and then I'm gonna look for the PCA. Here it is. And what you can do actually is here, define the input image layers by default, all are checked so we're gonna use all layers as input so you can choose standardized input yes or no um, if you leave no it doesn't apply standardization on the input if you choose yes it standardizes the range of the continuous initial input data uh, so that each of the input data contributes equally to the analysis right so that's your choice. I'm gonna choose yes, standardize my input data. Then two different settings here, limit number of components by variance to retain or component number. If you choose component number and you set it to three, it will add the first three principal components to your project. If you choose variance to retain, um, the default setting is here 0.95, that means 95% of the variance will be included and that could be one principal component or 10 or actually any number below or above that depends on your input data set. I'm gonna go for component number three so I can create a nice false color composite with these three PCA layers. What this algorithm does, it creates temporary layers in the project and uses the prefix that you can define here, which is by default PCA, and then it simply numbers them PCA1, PCA2, but you can change the prefix here anytime. That's all that you need to know. So let's execute this one and see if it creates some interesting results. Okay, the PCA is done, and if you scroll down in the image layers, you will see we have three, the first three principal components here. Um, we can display them. So that's the first one with the highest variance, second and third. Let's do a three band combination. And now you see the first three principal components in a false color composite. Let's quickly delete those again. And let's try to change the setting to retain variance. And let's go for 99%. Uh, let's see how many components this one uh, creates. So in the example before, the theoretical examples, 99% of the variants were in the first three principal components. Let's see how it looks like in reality. Okay, here we go. Let's again scroll down. Ooh, and you see in this case, it created 15 principal components. So in these 15 layers, we have 99% of the variants. And the further down you go, you see you the more noise you have. Okay. We can play around and apply it on the other scenes. Don't want to save the project um, and see what the result is here. I'm gonna change it back to component number three, execute it, and let's just wait and see. All right, let's have a look at the results in this case. Okay, yet another colorful output and false color composite of the principal components here. And remember these first three principal components probably have 95% of the variance of all input data. So all these 200 plus layers that we added to each project. Let's have a look at one more project. 
Yes, and as before, I created three principal components. Um, you could create more, but that's just a way to nicely display your data, your components with a three layer composite, as you see here on the screen. Last but not least, this one. I'm gonna create a small subset here because this one is large and it's gonna take very long to compute. All right, and with the PCA output, you can export the layers if you like. You can develop a rule set which is using the principal components instead of all the input bands. You could, for example, run the multi-resolution segmentation solely on the PCs, and that will run faster than on all 200 plus bands that you have as input layers. All right, so this is it. Thank you very much for watching this video on the principal component analysis in eCognition. Try to use it, have fun, enjoy it, and hear you next time.